Okay, so I actually went back because I actually like John Oliver, and I still do to this day. He's an amazing British comedian, and that's not the best clip of him in his uh, photogenic excellence, but this is a copy of Last Week Tonight with John Oliver done back in early February of this year. Now, this is way before the election and way before the outcome of what's been going on. I kind of want to back up a little bit since I was watching this. Uh, I've only been 10 minutes into this clip, and I have seen this. Not to uh, steal anything of what he covers in this, but let's cover some very important parts. So, um, proceeding in with, with what John Oliver talks about, I will mute this to protect the copyright. Um, everything from the rat hole that was discussed in this article, and even furthermore, uh, I'd like to get into... Let me exit that. Uh, here we go. So... John Oliver basically covers a portion in this early segment in February about uh, essentially Nikki Haley losing, and it was like apparently nobody else that really matters, but you know, it was a bunch of other projected winners. So then we get into the Chicago rat hole, which got arrogantly filled in after a same sex couple got married there, and then some people there spoke out. And then there was the fact that if you remember that Tucker Carlson spoke with Vladimir Putin and found it extremely dissatisfying equal to the fact that uh, Putin was apparently misled to the fact that he expected a stimulating conversation. Going back a bit further from that, Putin is well known for assassinating the husband of the renowned now uh, soon-to-be woman, and this is, this is after the gay couple speaks, there is, um, and that's just about the rat hole and what a memorable fact that must be, as funny as it also sounds, it was also part about Ron DeSantis kicking off his governmental campaign for those who actually know him or like him. More important there, even Israel and Gaza is covered, so you can see some relatable Justice aspects. So, so as we skip ahead and we go through here, there was the assassination that was back in February. So the guy that died in the prison that we now remember, we got to remember this one. This is important. Okay. Justice, both figuratively and lit. So going forward again. Literally, um, look, skip ahead to that, 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 and the and the funny little rat skit he did a while a long ways back here this is this is what's important in russia putin has been busy one of his most prominent critics alexei navalny died in a siberian prison this week nexi navalny that's the man who died and guess who is now going to be running for uh contestant against putin that would be his wife his wife is going to be running against putin i already did something a while back in my videos talking about protecting his wife She'll be talking out. Now, he also makes a very powerful statement that I'm sure he's going to be regretting and bringing back up in his former videos about this statement I just came across because he's also talking about the Supreme Court, Donald Trump, um, and, and it was just covered here. So go back a little bit because I already know this article. But he made one statement, which I know he's going to be walking back. This is such a painful reality. So, so... Supreme Court is going to be uh, essentially, which is already sitting, and this is back in February, at an 18% low rating, which is just terrible. And I'm sure we haven't gotten any better about that Supreme Court rating perception. I wonder if it's dropped even lower. Um, and, and then there's Clarence Thomas. All of these are presidential uh, Donald Trump's uh, picks. But skipping ahead to the fact that he makes a reference that if Donald Trump wins, he would rather see himself in a little tiny submarine the, uh, sunk into the ocean where you won't have to be around people um, Specifically, we're, gonna talk about we're gonna skip ahead to the part where he says this infamous line that I just had to pause right here right here listen to this so immune from prosecution for his role in January 6th it's also considering a case centering on something called Chevron deference which I know okay skipping ahead because that's not what we're really talking about here it's after this it's gonna be a huge year for a court that has seldom been more powerful and yet respect for it has seldom been lower so again i don't know why it's skipping past this part but it's like great confidence. it's like right in here it's true and it's hard to think he of says people have less confidence in right now aside from maybe the window seats in boeing planes <laughs> understandable reasons for that from the There's unpopular a... decision overturning roe v wade to the fact that one third of the court was appointed sometimes under dubious circumstances by a man who never won the popular vote. Ah, ah, that's right there. That's what he said. But the, Go back a little bit. Turning Roe v. Wade to the fact that one third of the court was appointed, sometimes under dubious circumstances, by a man who never won the popular vote. 
Ah, that's where we gotta stop that, because in 2024, that man right there just won the popular vote. Let's remember that, everybody. He just won the popular vote. Now, now uh, this segment, there's many more segments, and I'm sure Mr. John Oliver is gonna be uh, covering this, but, you know, I've gotta say something, because this is paramount to our future, to our kids, to our generation starting here today. It's all about the present, okay? It's all about the present. Uh, just bear with me while I set my phone up and just kind of cover it right there. Hold on. I'm going to put on a shirt because I have my shirt off to stay cool. I have no AC in my house except for in my bedroom. Okay, so really important here, okay? Really, really important. All right, this is really important. We got to remember something. We got to hold Donald Trump and the Republican Party responsible. If you don't have the time to watch videos, then what in the world are you doing on TikTok and YouTube anyway? We live in a country in America that I've already learned and probably have already known this. This isn't even a true democracy. I'll say that again. It's not even a true democracy. It's a, it's a federal republic. And then there's the democratic slash, you know, party system after. John Oliver is about to get one heck of a rude reawakening going back through all of his past talks when he just said that powerful statement. There's going to be a mini short on this because this is something that needs to be talked about. Donald Trump never before got the popular vote, but he got the popular vote. He got it in 2024. And that's by saying not on something that we need to be jumping around, yelling and screaming, celebrating like a bunch of loons and crazy nut jobs. There doesn't need to be people rubbing this stuff in people's faces. We got to take this seriously. What is this? A, a joke? Is, is running our country a joke? We, America just spoke. They believe that Donald Trump is better suited than a woman and whom is a felon. Who cares? Who cares if he's a felon? Who cares? Okay, so I'm with America on that. Who cares? Who cares if he's a felon? Who cares if he did this and that? Who cares if he screwed over the working man? Who cares if he, you know, you know, is stolen from people, ripped off people? You know, who cares what he did on January 6th? Who cares? That stuff's out the window. You know what really matters now? The present, today, and every day forward. That's what America is basically saying. We don't care about the past. We're just going to watch this dumpster fire. And, and you know what? I have to say it is a dumpster fire. It's a dumpster fire not just with the Republicans and Trump and what Trump creates for his own problems. That's his own dumpster fire. It's also a dumpster fire with the rest of our country. We're going to now stand around and watch this burning, flaming, firing pit. You want to go get shirts that celebrate it's a dumpster fire we're living in it? Go ahead and do it. If I could create shirts and they had to get it, would people buy it? Like, we're living in a dumpster fire? That's just what this country is? It's uh, turning into a dumpster fire? Be honest with me. Think about this. Do you think Donald Trump doesn't set fire to his own life, his own campaign, his own legacy, his own, his own, you know, his own name? I mean, his children are going to have to live with that for the rest of their life. His grandchildren and his children and his kids, they're going to have to live with this dumpster fire of the problems that he's created for them. And now he's going to be fully responsible for everything going on in what he's going to be taking over that is being left behind from the Joe, uh, Joe Biden, Kamala Harris. So what are we going to do? Just ride and point fingers and say it was all on them? No, because after the first month, second month, third month, fourth month of Trump's presidency, it's no longer talking about the blame of how the problems that were left behind from the past presidents, because that's hypocritical. What about what problems left uh, that were left behind from Donald Trump that Joe Biden and Kamala had to do, and then the mistakes that Kamala and Joe Biden had to make? You got to think about it. For every presidency, there's always been something left behind by every former president. Don't forget that. Learn history. It's a fact. It's truth. We talk about not going backwards. We're trying to move forwards. Everyone seems to be thinking we're going backwards. No, we're not. We're going forwards. It's 2024. We're going to be going into 2025. The presidential campaign, Donald Trump's elected officials, people that are moving this to and uh, moving us on this projected project 2025, uh, securing our border, mass deportation, you know, securing our city and our streets. Donald Trump was nearly assassinated on more than one occasion, and of which the second attempt was a failed and stupid, idiotic, you know, and thankfully, thankfully, stupid and idiotic and failed attempt. So is he going to take gun violence seriously? Is he going to take the whole red flag where like, violent offenders should not have weapons? Certain people should not have assault weapons? Certain people should not be able to just, you know, get their hands on weapons? Is he going to take that seriously? I mean, he almost was killed by somebody that fits that profile. Someone who was quiet, silent, was mentally disturbed, was known was disturbed. The person, the person they shot during Donald Trump's Pennsylvania rally that happened there on the top of that roof with the failed secret service and all that, there was no doubt that kid was disturbed and that there were questions asked about him. How the heck did he get as far as he did? And 
attempt to even make a shot on the former president. How'd that, how is that even excusable? It's a disgrace. But it's not just the fact that it's blaming on, the, on one side of the political party, Democrats, Republicans. It's on us as Americans. We can do something about this. As I already said, if this is not a democracy, it's a, it's a federal republic. We still hold the value of the principles in the Constitution. We, the people, where is our voices? If we all now say that we're fully divided, are we really divided or are we united? We are united. Think about it. The only people who aren't united are the people who are still bickering and bitching about the past. That's the first time I've ever said the B word. Think, think about it. Think about it. And I try to mutter it too because I try not to cuss. All right. You, you can't get a lot of educate and etiquette and talk uh, if you're just cursing and cussing. So think about this as something for brain food. Donald Trump didn't win the popular vote, but he did this year. And really, was it the full-blown popular vote of everybody in America or just the people who wanted Donald Trump on just the Trump side? So that doesn't mean that everybody now on the opposing side has to hate and spread fear and hate and order people on the Trump side need to spread that either. It's time we truly unite because we've been talking about this fact that we're truly divided. We're so different. There's so many unique qualities, so much division. But are we really divided or are we just choosing to be divided? Are we just choosing to make it up in our minds and think about it like that's all we are is just divided. We're not together. We're not whole. Think about that. Really think about that. A really good value is that many people in this country, as many people in the world, are going to live through the annals of history remembering that where was all the love? Where was all the compassion? Where was the hard work? Where was the effort? I, I, I am truly looking to a positive outlook on this, even if I did not get the vote I thought was successfully the verdict of what I thought this country might choose. I still stand by my fellow countrymen and everybody who voted, men, women, Africa, every, everybody, every American, regardless of color or creed. They voted for Trump. I'm now going to be watching with that. And the question is, at the end of Donald Trump's four years term, is he going to give up his, his power? Is it going to be a peaceful concession in, in 2028? In the four years that we go through, is it just going to be like a repeat of 2016 or worse? An inflamed, disgraceful, watching another campaign run for another four years? You know, we all know Donald Trump likes to talk about himself and talk up on stage and rile up people in emotions. That, that's, just, that's just guaranteed. Again, that's all he did in 2016. You know, we had, we had Republicans trying to pass laws and Democrats trying to pass laws, but neither party could agree. So now we're about to have full Republican control. And the real question is... Is something actually going to get done? And again, since we don't actually live in a democracy and we live in a federal republic, as the uh, elitists up there pulling the strings, as from what I've understood, are we going to revolt? No, because that's not what united people do. They don't revolt. We vote. We get out the corrupt. We get out the, the, the people that aren't doing anything. I mean, I'm sorry, but I'm not a Marjorie Taylor Greene fanatic, and I'm not, certainly not a fan of some of the other young, youthful extremist politicians, even on the Democrat side. I mean, there's many of them, many of them. I mean, there's many that can be challenged. And if they're not fit for office and they're not fit for their position, they need to get out. And how do they get out? People voting them out. So people need to take the responsibility to hold those accountable in highest office. And that's my message once more. Sorry about the blackout uh, part of my TV cutting out here. But this segment John Oliver did, where he said that Trump didn't get the popular vote. Well, he did. And now the question is, now it's no longer on just Trump but on the entire Republican Party and Trump together with his campaign staff and the American people, we're all in this together. Thanks for watching. McLovin News signing out.